The film begins with a nurse who, after finishing her shift, is returning home. As she gets into the elevator to go to her flat, a man wearing a helmet also enters the lift. When the lift stops on the third floor, both of them get out. The nurse goes into her flat while the helmeted man enters the flat next to hers. Inside her flat, the nurse starts talking to her friend, telling her that her neighbor has been watching her. As they talk, the nurse notices a shirt lying in front of her that doesn't belong to her. She suspects that the shirt was placed there by her neighbor. Angry, she storms out of her flat, shouting, I'm sure you'll come into my flat when I'm gone. That's why I've installed a camera. And now, watch as I call the police. After her outburst, when the nurse returns to her flat, someone knocks on her door. She goes outside to check, leaving her flat door open and hears distant voices. When she investigates, she finds a little girl and asks, what are you doing here so late? Go home, immediately. The nurse returns to her flat and is checking the camera recordings when she feels that someone is behind her. As she turns around, she sees the helmeted man standing there. Seeing the nurse, the man pulls a bloodstained rod out of his bag. The sight terrifies the nurse, who tries to escape, but the man suddenly hits her on the head with the rod, causing her to fall unconscious. He then repeatedly strikes her with the rod until she dies. Now, Kim had an illness that caused him to have severe allergies to even a little dirt or grime. He couldn't tolerate filth and wanted everything to be clean and orderly. One day, Kim receives a call informing him that his stepbrother has been missing for some time. The caller, the caretaker of the building where his brother lived, tells Kim to come and collect his brother's belongings. The next day, Kim arrives at the building, which looks exactly as we saw at the beginning. He goes to his brother's flat to collect his belongings, leaving his wife and children outside. Inside, he finds not just his brother's belongings, but also women's and children's clothes, shoes, and two toothbrushes. This seems strange to him, so he calls the caretaker and asks if anyone else lived with his brother because he found such items in his brother's flat. The caretaker tells him that his brother lived alone. Kim then decides to gather more information by visiting the flats of nearby residents. He notices something odd, strange marks near the doorbells of each flat. After talking to people, he learns that these marks indicate who lives in the house, how many men, women, and children. There were similar marks outside his brother's flat. Meanwhile, as Kim's family waits outside in the car, the children see a shop and insist on playing a game. Since it's a new place, their mother initially refuses, but when the children persist, she lets them go and begins calling her mother. After disconnecting the call, she looks outside and sees that the children have disappeared. Panicked, she rushes out and starts searching for them everywhere. Seeing her distressed, a neighbor named Juhi comes and offers help, taking her away in her car. In the meantime, Kim also arrives and upon learning that Juhi saved his family, thanks her. Juhi then takes the family to her flat and offers them coffee. She asks Kim, you seem like rich people. What are you doing in a place like this? Kim explains that his brother lived in one of the flats in this building. Upon learning Kim's brother's name, Juhi suddenly begins behaving strangely around them and starts forcing them out of her flat. Although Kim tries to talk to her, asking if something is wrong and why she is behaving this way, Juhi only says that his brother watches her and her daughter and causes them a lot of trouble. Hearing such things about his brother, Kim decides to stay in his brother's flat for a few days to learn the truth. Suddenly, Kim hears a strange noise, but when he goes out to investigate, no one is there. Feeling uneasy, he starts checking his coat for his phone, only to find that it's missing. He wonders how someone could have entered the flat when the door was locked and who could have stolen his phone. As he searches the entire flat, he discovers a secret passage that leads to the nurse's flat revealing that the neighbor who was bothering her was none other than Kim's brother. The nurse's suspicions were correct. The neighbor did enter her flat when she was away. Meanwhile, Kim's wife, returning home from school with their daughter, encounters a man in a helmet standing in the parking area. As she enters the lift, the man follows her. When Kim's wife exits on a floor, the helmeted man notes which flat she enters. Kim's wife has a parcel to collect and goes outside the building to get it. 
While the children are home alone, the helmeted man comes to their door and starts knocking. When Kim's wife opens the parcel, she is shocked to find it completely empty. Meanwhile, the children call their mother and tell her that someone has been knocking on the door for a long time. Their mother reassures them, saying, I'm coming right away and don't open the door. The helmeted man then tries to unlock the door by inserting his hand through the small hole in the door and opening the lock but fails. Kim's wife rushes back to her flat and as soon as she opens the door, a man from the opposite flat comes out. Upon seeing him, the helmeted man runs away. Kim is immediately informed of the situation. When the police arrive, they check the building's cameras and discover that the helmeted man was only following Kim's wife and hadn't noticed anyone else. Kim, surprised by this, tells the police that he thinks the helmeted man might be his stepbrother. Afterward, Kim visits his lawyer, who explains how they are stepbrothers. Kim's stepbrother's parents had adopted Kim and, shockingly, left all their property to Kim instead of their biological son, his stepbrother, who received nothing. Kim's father did this because when Kim and his stepbrother were young, his brother was accused of misbehaving with a girl. Although Kim knew his brother was innocent, he lied and said that the accusations were true and that his brother had indeed mistreated the girl. Kim lied because his stepbrother had a skin condition that left red marks on his skin. And Kim, who couldn't stand such filthy things, disliked his brother and lied about him. This made their father angry with his brother, even kicking him out of the house and not leaving him any inheritance. Kim now believes that his brother is trying to take revenge on him by troubling his family. When Kim returns to his flat after meeting with the lawyer, he notices that someone has made a mark on his doorbell, similar to the one on his brother's flat door, indicating the number of men, women, and children in the house. Kim checks the entire building and finds similar marks on everyone's doors. Later, Kim's wife learns that her son has left school much earlier and checks the building's camera, which shows her son playing in the park. But there's a problem. The helmeted man is also in the park. She quickly informs Kim and they rush to the park together. This time, Kim successfully catches the helmeted man, beats him, and when he removes his helmet, he realizes that it isn't his brother, but another man. Frustrated by the entire situation, Kim grabs a stick and goes to his brother's flat. But when he arrives, no one is there. Distressed, he returns to his car, where he sees another person wearing a helmet heading to a nearby shop. Realizing that he's being followed, the helmeted man takes off his helmet, revealing that he is not Kim's brother, but the nurse's friend from the beginning. They then return to Kim's brother's flat and start talking. Here, the nurse's friend tells Kim that he had given his credit card to his friend, the nurse, who has been missing for months, but his credit card has been heavily used. As they talk, Kim notices the helmeted man standing near the secret passage. They quickly chase after him and end up in the nurse's flat. While searching, Kim discovers the nurse's body, bloodied and wrapped in plastic, falling on him which terrifies him and causes him to scream. Hearing this, the nurse's friend comes in, and when he realizes that his friend is dead, he becomes sorrowful, but at that moment, the helmeted man stabs him in the back, injuring him. The next moment, the helmeted man strikes his head and kills him. The helmeted man then chases Kim and continuously attacks him with a rod. Kim, though injured, grabs a knife and chases the man back. They engage in a fierce fight and Kim tries to remove the man's helmet to see who he is. But the clever man stabs Kim in the leg to save himself, severely injuring him and causing Kim to let go of the helmeted man. The man is about to kill Kim with a knife when Kim grabs a nearby brick and hits the man's helmet. Kim then quickly escapes and hides in a flat, which turns out to be Juhi's flat, although Juhi is not home. Only her young daughter, who has an eye injury, is there. Kim tends to his wounds and, since his phone is dead, asks Juhi's daughter for a phone. The girl takes him to a room filled with women's purses, children's toys, and many phones. A girl brings Kim the phone that had gone missing from his coat when he was at his brother's flat. Kim is surprised and asks the girl where she got the phone. The girl responds that her mother gave it to her. Hearing this, Kim understands everything. It's clear now that the person wearing the helmet and attacking everyone is none other than this girl's mother, Juhi. 
The belongings of the people who were attacked were all Juhi's prey. Realizing this, Kim faints and falls to the ground, but when he looks up, he sees his brother's bloodied corpse lying there just like the nurse's body. Before he can react, Yuhi, still wearing the helmet, arrives and strikes him hard on the head with a rod, rendering him unconscious. While sitting in the car, Kim's wife suddenly remembers that she forgot to take her medicine, so she goes back to the flat to get it. After retrieving the medicine, just as she is about to leave, she gets a call from Kim, who is still alive but was unconscious at the time. He tells his wife the whole truth, that the person in the helmet is not a man but a woman, and it's none other than Juhi. He urges her to leave the flat immediately, as Juhi might be coming. But before his wife can escape, Juhi arrives, attacks her with a rod, and knocks her out. Then Juhi goes to the parking area where the children are sitting in the car. She asks them to open the door, but the children, being smart, refuse to do so. Juhi remembers that she has the car key, which she took after knocking out Kim. She uses it to unlock the car and tries to attack the children, but they cleverly escape from the car and run away. Kim, now in the parking area, cannot run fast due to an injury in his leg. The children, while escaping Juhi, reach their flat, but she follows them inside. Shortly after, Kim also enters the flat, but before he can reach his children, Juhi attacks him with the rod again. She then climbs on top of him and beats him until he loses consciousness. Afterward, she chases the children again. Meanwhile, Kim regains consciousness and tries to calm her down, pleading with her that if she wants the house, money, or wealth, she can have it all but she should spare his family and let them go. Juhi listens to him, and just as the deal is about to be finalized, there is a knock on the door. It's the police. Panicking, Juhi attacks Kim again, tries to strangle him, and attempts to kill him. Moments earlier, Kim had noticed that petrol had leaked and spread all over the house. So he takes a lighter and sets the house on fire. The flames quickly spread, and Juhi, frightened, realizes that the fire is close to her and her clothes have caught fire. She tries to extinguish the flames by pouring water, but she is already engulfed in fire. She burns completely and dies. Meanwhile, the police break in, manage the situation, and rescue the family. The next day, it is shown that the family is safe. Kim has left the flat, which a new family is now moving into, as Kim is moving to America permanently with his family. However, we see that Juhi's daughter is still hiding in a cupboard in that flat, hinting that Juhi used their flats because the police had raided her place, forcing her to vacate it. Juhi targeted Kim and his family, just as she had done with many others, killing people and stealing everything from them. Although Juhi is dead, the evil might not be over because her daughter is still alive, indicating that the cycle could continue. The film ends here.